Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Dave and Confuse. This episode, we have a very interesting guest, also from the Fresno comedy scene. Let's give a warm welcome to Anthony, a.k.a. Tony D. Dugan. Hey, hey how's it going? Thanks for having me. Very excited. We got Tony D. live and direct. Uh, and before we start, let's take a quick second uh, to give a shout out to our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by the Fresno Cactus and Succulent Society. Uh, if you need something in your front yard that's drought resistant, but also looks fucking great, stop by one of their events. Side note, I am actually a member of Fresno Cactus and Succulent Society. Have events every couple of months. It's a good time. You know, there's food, there's fun for the whole family. Now back to episode four with Tony D. If I may interject on the succulents, uh, true or false, do you, or aren't a lot of girls into succulents too? I feel like that's a thing. It is. So you want- if, if you're trying to like woo a lady, buy yourself a succulent, ooh, buddy. Valentine's Day, your girl's birthday, Mother's Day, you can't mm-hmm. go wrong. Fresno hey. Cactus and Succulent Society. Yeah. Get, getting their suck on. <laughs> like, I mean, um, Mother's Day was yesterday, but I mean, get it, get, be a year yeah. early, dude. Come on. You can just buy present beer on for no reason. Yeah, dude. So we got Tony D in the building. Uh, we're going to get to know Tony D a little bit better. So let's start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Where did Anthony grow up? Where is he from? Where did he start his beginnings? Well, funny you asked, you asked me that. Um, I grew up in the Merced Atwater area. Um, I, I bounced between the two because it's a weird thing where the house I lived in, the post office changed. And so I lived in the same house my whole life um, up until I moved. But it used to be Merced, now it's Atwater. So so the border crossed me pretty much. But yeah, I grew up in... Um, Merced Atwater area until I was 20 and then I moved to Fresno. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, a lot of people probably know Merced driving through or if they <laughs> go to UC Merced. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, dude. Um, yeah. It's, it's a good rest stop. It's a fun place to spend an hour. Get, we got an hour, a stop. an hour tops. Then you got to get the hell out. Yeah, we, we got a solid Denny's. Um, not too many theater kids there nightly, so. so I know yeah. a couple. I know a couple of towns that would kill for a Denny's. So. Exactly. Going for you. Uh, yeah. What, what schools did did you go to, Anthony? Did you go to Merced High? Uh, did you go to college after that at all? Oh, um, I went to Buhack Colony High School Ooh. in Atwater. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, home of Thunder. Our, our mascot was a sound uh, and so yeah and then graduated not not to flex and then um went to uh community college for two years that was a lot of fun um at Merced college and then uh transferred over to fresno state where i have my pa in psych merced college were you watching the rodeo team out there or what nah dude nah um Missed the rodeo. I was not able to catch it, unfortunately. It? It's like, yo, I need – and it's funny, too. I was jonesing for, like, watching people ride bulls, but just missed it. Yeah. I could picture you trying out and then just, just this isn't for me, and just going right to the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Going back to the origins, uh, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Do you have any siblings, any pets that stick out in your mind? Um, yeah, uh, older sister, five years, um, five years older than me. Uh, interesting story with that. We, we technically, well, we have different biological fathers and then my dad adopted her and then her dad died like about 10 years ago from, um, um, from a methadone, um, OD, which is odd because like methadone is what you take to kick stuff and 
this fool is here ODing on it, I guess. Yeah, trying to OD, OD on the real stuff, you know? I know, right? Fucking pimp. God. Uh, RIP. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Jesse Brown. Never knew the guy, but A. <laughs> yeah. what, what nationality is Anthony Dugan? I'm uh, half Mexican, half white. So, so white, but also my mom's Mexican. So, so you have the the good home cooking not really okay here's the thing with that my grandma who is mexican was racist against mexicans so like any like culture oh. shit like i know um so any like anything related to culture or anything died with that i not to say my mom's a bad cook it's just we didn't really learn any mexican cooking. no spices allowed just this is a white household to be real, like, love my mom to death. Um, she, she has a, she's pretty, like, on top of her blood pressure, like, problems, which, shout out to her, but that means no salt goes into anything. Mm. So, yeah. Gotta watch out, it'll creep up on you. I know, right? Yeah. Going back to the origins, um, I know you, you were doing the comedy thing, but I think you might have started music first. Oh yeah. Clarify that. Yeah. I've been playing music live since like 2010. I started in a I had a I was in a little punk band before that, but like actually like performing in front of people uh, was this band called Control Delete from Atwater, California. What what? Um nice. mo- we were mostly cover bands. Like most of the members in that band were still learning stuff, so so we, it was mostly like Green Day covers. Uh, <laughs> we we did a cover of Radiohead Creep, very creative. But what we did to change it was, you know how at the end it gets all quiet? Uh, we played the end loud. So uh, the very, band, very uh, alt. I know, yeah, very avant-garde of us, very experimental. <laughs> um, after that, um, I just did solo stuff for a while under the name Satellites. Um, record some demos here and there, and then finally um, met um, a couple other folks, um, and then we started jamming, and then we started um, playing as a full band. So yeah, Satellites. Anthony Dugan's band, Satellites. Go check it out if you have a spare second. Check it uh, out. Um, satellites.bandcamp. I think it's like satellites559.bandcamp.com, or for our new newer stuff sleepyghostrecords.com go to go there and then you'll find out go there link will be in the description uh, oh hey, look at that yeah yeah so, tony tell us about how you how you i guess progressed from just playing instruments to becoming lead vocals in a screamo band <laughs> i wish we were screamo we'd be more popular uh <laughs> I I I was always a bad singer growing up because kind of everyone is. Um, so I was always self conscious about singing, but I kind of realized that it was gonna be hard to find other band members. And so I was like, let's just do it all by myself. And so that's when I got more serious about singing. Um, and and yeah, and I I feel like I'm a C plus vocalist. I I could hit notes. And you, still, and you still are lead singer in Satellites, is that correct? Yes. Singer, guitarist, songwriter. Just melting some faces in the front row and also just screaming at them as well. Tell oh, us, yeah, yeah. Tell and us a like, little bit about, uh, not to cut you off, tell us a little bit about like the beginnings, what are kind of your influences music-wise, and then maybe how that uh, – kind of transformed into doing the comedy thing as well? Oh, um, music-wise, um, eighth grade, I fell in love with the Ramones. And so that got me started on, like, more melodic punk and things like that. So, like, I got into all of the, like, all the high school punk bands that you listen to, like, like Bad Religion, No Effects, um, Anti-Flag, things like that. Got super into that. And then I got – and then <laughs> – um, like near the end of high school, I started listening to Weezer like heavy, like to the point where me 
me and my friend Amelia, we started a Weezer podcast where we have two whole episodes. <laughs> just, de- just dedicated to Weezer? Are you, do you like break down each song? Kind of. It's more break down each album. But we'll, we, we touch, we touch <laughs> each song. As soon as the next album comes out, episode three of the pod drops. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're on. We- Weezer's not bad. Not a bad band to do a pot on, so I yeah. don't hate it. They're fun. They're fun because they're so hit and miss. Like their good albums are so fucking good, and their bad albums are so fucking bad. Um, so they're they're a really fun band to talk about. <laughs> um, I I liked Weezer. I liked rock at the time, but I'm also a heavy Lil Wayne guy. Oh, I nice. remember when they did. Uh, collab (laughs) he did that weezer wheezy collab i was going (laughs) crazy (laughs) oh my god but tell us a little bit about because i'm sure you you know being lead vocalist that probably got you a little bit more comfortable with the microphone on the stage tell us about when you first started comedy and how did that start a little bit i i think it just it, it at a very basic level, yeah. I think the the link between music and comedy, they're very, very, very similar to me. But um, and like what happened was a few years back, like I was going through this weird stage where I was just like super alone all the time, and so I would listen to podcasts constantly. Hey, podcast! Hey, look at that! I'm on one now, full circle. Um, and so I'd listen to podcasts constantly. I'd listen to Pete Holmes' podcast. I'd listen to Mark Marin, um, all that good stuff. And so that's, I'd always loved uh, stand-up comedy, but like being able to hear the nitty gritty and being able to hear how similar it was to music and writing music and performing music, um, that that got me really like itching to do comedy. Uh, but before comedy, I tried improv because I was a drama kid in high school and I did a I did a bunch of improv in high school. So I was like, oh, I had fun with that. Let's try that again. And I took improv lessons and it was cool, but I found that I had the most fun when I was ranting by myself. And so I was like, I guess I got <laughs> to commit to this comedy thing. Mm-hmm. And, and then... Um, How old were you during that, all that? That was, um, that was like two, three years ago. So it wasn't that long ago, but... But that's when I did my first like little batch of open mics. Um, did did it for a minute. I liked it, uh, but for some reason, just kind of fell off. I think I was just feeling shy and and just not like yeah, just feeling shy. I was just feeling nervous about it, um, and so I I stopped and then got more focused on music again. Um, and then recently, um, when I like started started, which was last year almost. Um, because our our anniversaries are like super close. Because yours is Cinco de Mayo, right? Cinco de Mayo, yeah, that was my yeah. one one year comedy anniversary. Mine is like like mid July, so like okay. somewhere in the middle of July. Uh, but right in there. So, yeah, right in the meaty part of July. But um, what happened was I'd gone through this big breakup and um, like like it it was like a bunch of different things that like caused that breakup but like the main thing was that I started crushing on my girlfriend's best friend and so that like tore everything apart yeah I know yeah some some ammo for the band oh yeah (laughs) but um and so that that like fucked a bunch of things up and so um and so that that ended and then um kind of almost right away i i started talking i don't know if it started talking because i think but um but like i guess yeah i started talking to um another girl like and and she was cool but like it just like didn't work out right away and then i realized like man i need something to fill my life that isn't goth girls and so fill the void somehow yeah, feel the feel the goth girl vibe, um, and so and so um, and so that's when I started doing comedy. Tell us a little bit about your first mic. Uh, did it go well? Did it bomb? Where was it? Um, the first, 
um, my first ever mic I did <laughs> was at the shanty in, um, it, it's the, it was this little shitty bar, um, like right, right across the way from, uh, what's it called? Uh, from, uh, fashion fair. It is the little shitty. The shanty. Yeah, the shanty. Like, another comedian said it best that he said that uh, this bar looks like the result of a divorce. <laughs> like, like. Um, it's half, it's just half missing. There's just no, there's like half the tables and chairs that should be there. <laughs> the people's souls were half gone. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was, it, was, it was once a beautiful place, a flourishing flourishing yeah. bar and now it's just stripped of everything pretty much uh, <laughs> and like like i was like trying to watch the comics and then like the loudest argument i've ever heard is like far <laughs> length away from me and so that that's the kind of bar we, we're talking and so um I, it was actually something that um that danny minch used to run danny minch i think i think dave was might have been involved too he was definitely there um because i met him that night but um met both of them that night but um i was sitting there i had my little corona i was just sitting watching the comics i was kind of trying to get the guts to go up but i wasn't sure and then um the very the very very salty uh bartender she was like hey you gonna go up and i was like i don't know she was like what are you chicken (laughs) and i was like yeah, I'm kind of chicken. And she's like, nah, don't worry about it. Just go up. I was like, no, okay, why not? And then I went up and I did decent. Like, I got laughs. I, like, it, a lot of my jokes, like, like you found this, like, especially when you're starting out, like, you'll go up and you think you have a joke, but it's more just an idea. And you, you're just up there without a punchline. Yeah. I had a couple of those, but then I had a couple of, like, salt, solid for your first time jokes i did okay yeah um yeah it was cool it it felt great like it was amazing like like because like the first like 10 times you go up it's almost like being on pcp it's like amazing and terrifying all at once oh it's crazy it's like getting off a roller coaster yeah exactly fucking adrenaline's pumping you're sweating it's crazy yeah yeah it's a roller coaster of pcp so tell us a little (laughs) bit about the worst time you bombed and the best set you've ever had. <laughs> uh, worst time I bombed. I don't know if you got got to this stage, but there's a point like I think it was August. So I'd only been doing it for three months, but for some reason I was feeling invincible because I had like a week of good sets. And um, and here I'll you know what let let me um. Let me rewind because um, the best time I, the best set I ever did kind of ties into the worst set. Um, because the best set I ever did was um, was like three months into doing comedy too, um, um, and it and I was it in Merced. Uh, I was like I was there for my ten year um, ten year what's called. Um, Reunion. Reunion, thank you. Thank you. I don't know words today. Uh, ten year reunion. And um and I went to this bar called the Partisan because they have an open mic. It's it's like a mixed mic, or it's a mixed mic, and so a bunch of different performers go up. Um just wanted to try it out. And um and the, it was me and two other comics. Um and the two other comics were like brand new and, and the problem with being a brand new comic in Merced is that there's like one open night a week, maybe two, and so it's hard to get get stage time. And so, so they were a little rusty, obviously, because like they were they're brand new. And then, um, and then I ended up having like a really good set, which which was nice because I was like terrified because it was a mixed mic. And I, how, many, how but, many people in the audience? Um, it was a good amount of people. It was probably like thirty like and Real good. yeah and then right after so right after the basically the whole population of merced was there watching you <laughs> exactly yeah 
Yeah, all of Merced saw my above average set. Uh, <laughs> but it, it felt really good because, like, like it, they before that, they maybe laughed at a couple of jokes from, like, every other comedian. So it felt good to have, like, an, an all right set. Um, and so felt really good. Um, and then right after, I had a Tinder date. And, like, and then so I hung out with her, and she was awesome. And so I was like, yes, to, um, I rule. Everything's amazing. Um, and so the worst set I ever bombed, um, the, the girl I, I was seeing, the Tinder date, um, we were dating, like, kind of off and on, but we were still, like, sort of dating. And, um, and she works at, a, at Coffee Bandits, the local um, coffee um, yeah, a local coffee shop. Um, and so they have an open mic. And so I was like, I will go to this open mic. I will fucking kill because I fucking kill Merced. And I went and I bombed the hardest I've ever bombed in my life. <laughs> to the point where afterwards she was like, you know what? I respected that because I could tell that you could tell that they weren't into it, but you still kept going. So you're like an artist or something. Like that's a direct quote. <laughs> You just you just put your head down and just went right through it. That's just yeah, that, takes, exactly. that takes balls. And and that was and my set was a little more crass back then too. And I had a really heavy joke um that really didn't have a punchline. It was more just like a I I'll, I'll I'll tell the story. Um yeah, because this, Yeah, this ties into my first open mic because that I ever did. Because the first open mic I ever did, um there's this other dude um uh, and like he was a really interesting dude he was kind of starting out to he was really into like professional wrestling and like like trying to kick a meth habit like like Airless? interesting <laughs> no no i'm i'm not gonna use names i'm not trying to because you'll you'll find them out later shout out Aaron lewis uh, episode three david <laughs> confused check it out continue Hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, that dude's a character too. He's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, but um, meth addict wrestler. Yeah, meth addict wrestling fan, a former meth addict. Um, and so um, I like like cool guy. I I like would run into him every once in a while at open mics. We'd always chat. He was always like a really nice dude to me. And then when I quit comedy that that at that time. He kind of disappeared too. Like I saw like Facebook posts, like, "Hey, I wonder where so and so is at." And then um, I ran into um, t- to uh, like a- another comic that I knew at around that time um, at at a bar. Like just before I restarted doing comedy, I was like, "Hey, do you remember what happened to so and so?" He was like, "Oh yeah, so and so. Yeah, he. I hadn't seen him since he got arrested." And I was like, "Whoa." that sucks, man. Like, I thought, like, oh, he, like, got hooked on meth again, and, like, now he's, like, doing time. And and I was, like, what happened? And then my buddy was, like, oh, he got caught with a 14-year-old. Yeah. Lock him yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> I was, like, oh, I guess it wasn't that cool, maybe. But I was telling that story, that story on stage. And that story has kind of a punch at the end, but it's not, like, a punchline is it's more of a whoa than a haha kind of thing just like and, yeah and so I, I i told that story to a bunch of like a bunch of very concerned teenagers and 20 somethings <laughs> they were not into it but to be fair my the girl i was dating at the time was very sweet but it was humiliating tell us tell us a little bit about uh, your influences com- in comedy and kind of the maybe some artists that got you into it or some that you like watching the most? Um, my, um, I think the dude who really got me into it was Pat Oswalt. Like, Ooh, okay. um, yeah, yeah. I, I was um, in middle school, I was really into comedians of comedy. Um, mm. Like that, that was big to me. So so especially him and Maria Bamford were kind of my like, oh shit, this is this Zach is Galifianakis is in that too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. He was another big guy to me, like early, early, early. Um, and then uh, 
I think now there's this comedian, uh, Brent Weinbach, who's super, super funny. He's, uh, like, I'm, like, my goal is to kind of try to find my, like, version of what he does, because he, he's, like, he's a weirdo. Like, it's hard to kind of explain what he does. He's kind of weird. Like, if he's kind of got, like, a Nathan Felder vibe. Okay. Just, like, Very super dry. Deadpan. Yeah, super yeah. deadpan, super, like, awkward. But Nathan really Felder cool. from the popular Nathan For You. Exactly. No. That's, <laughs> that show is just ridiculous because he just oh, takes absolutely. concepts and just won't stop. Yeah. Uh, speaking of sources i know you're a big seinfeld fan <laughs> oh yeah that's you i gotta yes, ask so. you r.i.p oh my Jerry god seinfeld i hope i didn't break you the news expand <laughs> on that expand on what jerry seinfeld no. meant to you no um jerry stiller or jerry, jerry stiller. stiller i'm sorry jerry stiller <laughs> um no that's that's hard i would jerry stiller he he's another kind of talented maniac um like super super brilliant can make anything funny like clearly like most greats like not all the way there but in the best way possible yeah love Jerry Stiller. The, the best way possible that's way possible but yeah Seinfeld was huge to me too thanks for reminding me like like it was huge to my family like one of my earliest memories is like um we have this at home we have this computer with this like air it was like Chuck Yeager jet plane simulator game. And I loved it as like a three-year-old for you. I remember having to wait until like Seinfeld was over before my dad would come and like set it up. Like Seinfeld was huge to my family. Nice. And like everyone yeah. gather around and watch it together, that type of deal. Oh yeah, yeah. That was that was our that was our jam. So what what was going through your mind when you found out that he had a was it a 14 year old girlfriend <laughs> say 17 to be fair 17 as no, a 35 no, year old man yeah no that's that's fucking crazy like, like i i love jerry he's very talented also he's a big creep <laughs> um, you, yeah, you, you know no one's perfect huh that's yeah no no nah, date a 17 year old is very not cool. i don't Okay, I I don't get it either. Like, like, cause I mean, like, I've date. I'm 28, and I've like talked to a 24 year old. I'm like, whoa, this is a little young. I don't know. Right. I, it's like immediately like this. Like, they're just like so much younger. Like, how uh -huh. could you even? That's a weird thought, but. <laughs> like, uh, I I think it helps too because I have. A, a little sister who's a lot younger than me but is also an adult like oops she's 19 and so it's easy for me to see like younger women as like kids because because I grew up with a, a kid for like years and years and years and so it's easy for me to be like oh that's a child still yeah it's just yeah some guys are like, wired a different way it's weird yeah yeah like I like yeah, like date. I I feel like kind of twenty one is kind of the the main year. Like, if you're significantly older and you're dating someone under twenty one, it's creepy. I think over twenty one, it's it could be sus sometimes depending on the dynamic. But but I mean, but like every kind of age is different. But I feel like under twenty one, you should just kind of avoid if you're. Yeah, if you're like a hundred. You know, make sure yeah. they're at least 21. Yeah, and you're, exactly. Then you're good. Then you're yeah. good. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now it's time to get to know Tony D a little bit more. Time for some hard-hitting questions. Let's go. Ready. Let's jump in a time machine going forward and back. What's mm -hmm. some advice that you would give to your 12-year-old self and then to your 62-year-old self? Go. That's a, good, that's a good question. I like that. 12-year-old self. Um, I would tell him, because I was a very stressed out kid, I would tell 12-year-old me, none of this matters. You're, you're surrounded by assholes, but you'll eventually not be surrounded by assholes. I, I would tell 12-year-old that. Eventually, you're going to become an asshole too, so you'll just blend <laughs> in. Yeah, eventually, everyone. 
<laughs> you thought you thought you hated other people. Wait until you grow up and you hate yourself. There we go. Um, Sixty-two year old self. Sixty-two year old me. I would try to tell him not to hate on the younger generation, because because I'll tell him, hey, you remember when you're 28 and if you hate like hated older people for hitting you. So yeah, just just chill on the younger generation. The funny thing is though, like I can't stand like the whole like baby boomers being like, oh millennials, blah blah blah. blah. But I'm I'm getting to the point where like <laughs> like Zoomer stuff is weird to me. Like I can't. I can't get behind TikTok. Like, yes, I exactly. hate TikTok. Like, I don't hate TikTok, but it's something that I'm like, I don't know. Um, right? And like, I'm thinking the same thing where it's like, I don't want to be the old guy yelling at a cloud, but mm-hmm. it's like, just some of the stuff these kids are doing these days. I don't know. <laughs> and like, um, um, YouTubers too. I don't know why YouTubers get on my nerves so much. Like, like people who make videos on youtube chill i fuck with it but like youtubers like if you start a video with like and subscribe i i don't fuck with it i don't it's, fuck with it's it. very there's a very like artificial like plastic like yeah. the way that they conduct themselves and it's like very inauthentic in my opinion which makes yeah. me freaked out yeah yeah it's like what are you hiding yeah yeah thank you yeah good good job just the, just the fact that like kids I think I saw something like kids, like a first grade survey said like, what does everyone want to be? And they all want to be like YouTubers or podcasters. Mm-hmm. It's like, God damn it. That's, that's <laughs> Mean- my lane now. Stop yeah. It. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're recording a podcast that right? can be on YouTube. <laughs> These fucking kids trying to be podcasters. What the hell are they thinking? Just looking like assholes. And then I just look in the mirror. <laughs> if... Okay, finish the sentence. In a previous life, I was. In a previous life, I was. I was vibing. That's that's all I did in my previous life. Just yeah. chilling out. Because I'm I'm imagining myself like like 1700s. Because they didn't have a lot of stuff to worry about. I mean, they were starting wars about tea, like. They're like America's worst problems at the time were like, well, to white people, America's worst problems were like, hey, this tea's too expensive. So I, yeah. feel, I feel like it'd be easy. Taxation to without representation. Yeah. Is, isn't that such a lame reason to start a war? Like, hey, this tea's too expensive. I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> they just want to stick, stick it to the man. Bunch of rebels mm-hmm. in this country. Yeah. Yeah. The 1700s were a good time for light-skinned folks i feel like i'd be vibing if i were living there what is your biggest vice biggest vice Oof. um i'm trying to calm down a couple of my vices um i was overeating like crazy like like um like stress eating like nuts um because i used to be 170 i'm at 200 and so Ooh. i'm trying to yeah, I'm, yeah, I know. Two bills flat. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that under control. Um, also, I, I'm terrified of confrontation, and so, so that leads me to like, not say what I want or say what I need. And so I'm trying to be more assertive in that sense. I'm trying to be like, yo, I want this. I need this. So I'd say those are the two things I'm working on right now. I like that. These are good questions, by the way. I, I fuck with this podcast. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'm going to have to cut that snippet and put it as some promo. <laughs> what, uh, um, what is the weirdest thing that people don't know about you? Um, I, well, I think people know this about me, but I, I guess it's fun. Um, I'm, I'm uncut. I'm not circumcised. Lady. Oh, all natural. All natural, dude. Did you have that on your Tinder profile? <laughs> I should. Yeah. I don't know. I, I deleted my Tinder. What? I feel like you're. I, mean, I don't and know. I was, that was my I thing for a minute. Say this. Yeah, you were Mr. Tinder for a while. Yeah, all my jokes were about like loving Tinder, but that was only because. 
because now I have people to talk to now. Like yeah. now I have like, and I, I was just finding like Tinder's a lot of work. Like, and like the, usually the best thing you can get out of Tinder is kind of a like, warm date. And so I, I started realizing that I liked hanging out with friends way more. And then, and so, yeah. Just start, you know, having a couple of drinks during an art hop and see where it takes you. Yo, you know what, what, I mean? yeah. what is your biggest pet peeve? Uh, biggest pet peeve. To be real, right now, a lot of things are annoying me. Like, like the quarantine has made me really prickly, like, especially at stores. Because I, I think in the quarantine, people forgot how to walk. Like, so you got people walking, like, just a little bit too slow where, like, it's hard to pass them up, but you're stuck behind them and you want to get around them. That right now, I don't fuck with. <laughs> that's, that's the shit I don't like. Yeah, I don't like it when I'm walking my, my own business and I have an elderly person with no mask, like, charging me like it's freaking Gary Payne on Michael Jordan. It's like, <laughs> stay away from me. I'm trying yeah. to go around you, and you're, like, trying to give me a freaking smooch on the cheek. It's like, come on, dude. Work with me here. Yeah. What? Fuck people, man. And everyone under 70 should just bounce. Get them just, out this country. Just Ooh, <laughs> there, there's an interesting theory. It's kind of like uh, sending all the, the prison mates, the inmates, to New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Like what they did with uh, Australia, they sent all the criminals yeah, yeah. to New Zealand. Just send all the elderly people to like Greenland. I fuck with that. I think they like Greenland. Like, like it's nice and cool. We can trick them because like, yeah, we're not sending yeah. them to Iceland. We're sending them to Greenland. Yeah, exactly. See, that's humane. Thank you. It's humane. That's <laughs> what, that's what they think. Uh, <laughs> wh- what is the number one song that makes you feel guilty for liking it? Ooh. Well, I'm a Weezer fan, so any Weezer song. <laughs> but um, most of my most of the music I like is our guilty pleasures. But because um, I like a lot of like more melodic punk and like things like that. So most of the music I like isn't cool. But let me try to think of a good guilty pleasure. Um, let's see. <laughs> Maybe some Pink. I'm not that into Pink. Pink Pink is kind of obnoxious to me. Like. I don't know something something about her, and um, I, I I don't think it's pink. It's more pink fans. I think pink her, pink herself. She's cool. I think pink fans. There's something about them. That cheetah girls. Fuck with the cheetah girls. Like they make objectively <laughs> good music, so I can't feel guilty about that. Mm-hmm. Um, any guilty pleasure? I feel like anything that's on the radio that you like is like guilty because it goes against your like indie roots. Yeah. Like underground yeah. roots. <laughs> you know what the main person coming to mind is that I don't listen to him all the time. Jason Derulo. But, and I, and I feel like, I feel like if, if like, I feel like this is going to be a hot take, but every once in a while I'll listen to like a lot of Eminem for some reason. Like, I don't know. It, it like it's because a lot of his songs are about like graphically killing his girlfriends oh. and like oh. and like like burying him with like and like his his daughter like helping him like shovel her <laughs> and like like that and so it's like legit like not cool music but you dude just, can flow that's that's when you just go and just break stuff in a junkyard you just yeah put an Eminem all the way up and just start to strut. You start fucking shit up. Yeah, no drywall safe when I listen to that. <laughs> start that's, start drinking my Mountain Dew Code Red. <laughs> yeah, no, Eminem's not like an all the time thing for me, but every once in a while for some reason, there'll be like like a solid week where I listen to more Eminem than I should. Just get it out of your system. Just get the adrenaline exactly. pumping. Yeah. I, I want to go over stuff that we forgot uh, okay. talking about your diet. Yeah, yeah. Tony D was ahead of the curve. Finish this sentence. Anthony Dugan has been vegan since. Ooh, I, I was vegan since 2015. I'm eating cheese again. Ooh. Because, yeah, Walk us, I know. 
walk us through the very beginning of that. What made you go vegan? And then like, did you just break down? What made you have to have the cheese? I got you. I got you. Um, well, I, I've been vegetarian since high school. And high school is all the typical hippie reasons, the, like the animals are chill and all that kind of stuff. Health and um, animals or just animals are chill? Uh, both. Both mostly animals, but health too, I guess. <laughs> um, but so you were early. Then, you're early onto that. Relatively, yeah, I'd say so. Um, no one, no one in my town was like vegetarian. Yeah, you were probably the only person in Merced vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, by because a long shot. Yeah, Merced is heavy FFA. Like, have <laughs> like FAA runs that shit. Like, you can't you can't spit on the sidewalk without asking FFA first. Big, F- big FFA won't let you be vegetarian. They force exactly. you to eat meat. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so I was vegetarian for, for a cool minute. And then 2015, I was, um, I was in between jobs. And, I, and that was when the economy was still kind of shitty. And so, like, looking for a job, miserable, couldn't find anything. And so I, it was, like, one of those things where I, I was like, I need something that I can control. I need need to do something good for myself that I can control. So I was like, oh, let's go vegan. And so I went, I was vegan for a while and, and it, it was cool. It was, um, it was good. I didn't notice a lot of big changes. Um, like, but, but it was still cool. Um, notice I had a little more energy. Um, that's kind of it, but it was, it was cool. Um, and then after the big breakup, um, from last year, um, like, like I, I was at the fashion fair mall and I saw that they were selling those, um, I forget the actual name for this, um, but they were selling the hot Cheetos with the nacho cheese in it. I was and like, it just broke you. Yeah. I, because I was like, like that looks good. And I was like, why am I vegan? Really? Let's just, just eat it. Who cares? And so uh, the stress eating, the stress eating just broke you down. It it was pure stress eating. And so I, I ate it and it was delicious. Um, And so, so now I'm, I still eat mostly vegan, but like about once a week, I'll like get pizza or like, (laughs) like nacho cheese covered. Yeah. Yeah. What are your cheat meals? Um, Mostly Taco Bell. It's mostly Taco (laughs) Bell. Fuck with Taco Bell hard. Um, Occasionally eat pizza. Well, I but mean, yeah. T-Bell, that's probably not even real meat anyway, so you're good. Oh, I, I'm still, I'm still vegetarian. I don't, I don't fuck with meat, so. Oh, nice. Oh, but it, so the cheese, the cheese. Probably yeah. Probably real cheese either, so. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'm sure very minimal cheese. What's your go-to at T-Bell? Is this drunk T-Bell or is this regular? Ooh, whatever, whichever, man. What's your, uh, what's your regular order? What's your drunk order? Are they the same? Okay, I got you. Uh, regular order is usually usually nachos bel grande um drunk order nachos bel grande and then those like little like cheesy potato grillers that's something their their dollar dollar menu used to go crazy yeah uh they had i don't know i'm sure you could still ask for them but they had these like spicy soft potato tacos (laughs) buddy it was like it was like at any given time you can just spin a wheel and it's like cheesy, beefy, or like melty, and then mm-hmm. like the next subject is like potato, <laughs> cheesy, beefy, and then it's like some kind of like wrap, potatoes, taco, soft taco. I know, it's like I know, twice, some kind of combination of all the all those ingredients. Twice a year they just spin a roulette wheel and then they find yeah. out their new item. <laughs> um, no, mom talk, dude. Did you see that they're um, they're like selling like their test kitchen now, where like for like twenty bucks you just get a bunch of Taco Bell ingredients and then you just make whatever. Really? Yeah, dude. One one of these days, when I'm drunk enough, I'll get that just gorge. <laughs> just yeah, that would be. I feel like that defeats the whole purpose, though. It's like <laughs> here, you only- make it. Yeah, yeah. I want you to make it really shitty, right? It's not <laughs> supposed to be made well. Yeah. Uh, next question. Name five people, dead or alive, that you would want to have dinner with and conversate with. Um. Okay. 
um, myself, because I, because you never get to see like who you are. You just kind of live your life. I kind of want to see what I'm like. So myself, I'm sure that'd be like horribly awkward, and I'd be like self conscious the whole time. Like, oh, I look like that. But, you know. That would be a trip. Yeah. So me, uh, my grandfather, um, from what I hear, a very cool man. Um, I don't remember him too much. He passed when I was nine. But, but was he so, also was he also ashamed to be Mexican? No, he he was a little more proud. Like, like uh, I think what happened was that my grandma she was lighter skinned so she could get away with it. Like my gran- grandpa, he was very dark complected, so he like he, he kind of had to accept it. Which which thank goodness because like the little sliver of culture I have comes from him and his side. The last little piece you have to hold on to. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Tony D, your grandfather. My grandfather. Um, dead or alive. Um, comedian Chris Gethard. Because I'm also like a huge Chris Gethard fan. I love him to death. Um, <laughs> Billy Joe Armstrong, but I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Like, yeah. I, got, uh, I already got him pretty much. Um, and then... Ah, uh, another relative. I think I'd go great grandma because I, I hear she was she was a really sweet woman too. I think she passed the year I was born, and so I, I'd want to chill with great grandma too. That's always a trip to think about. Like, if if we don't get wiped out by this goddamn COVID, mm-hmm. like your great grandkids, they'll be able to just log on to your Insta and just see what you're what you're all about. I know. Like, yeah. Imagine if our great grandparents had that. <laughs> yeah, like, yo, great granddad really liked eating ass. Yeah, yeah. Lo- my great grandfather loved to eat ass. He would get drunk with his friends and f- fly through folding ch- uh, tables mm. at parties. <laughs> uh, you know, shotgun and four locos. He got after it. <laughs> All right. Last question. Let's go. What is the one conspiracy that makes the most sense to you that could be the most real because i know you're kind of low-key conspiracy guy right i don't i don't know if i'd say that because the thing i I just made i totally made that up (laughs) i i should have played along i've been like you know what low-key yeah no like um, like a tinfoil hat behind you yeah i totally didn't yes and i'm sorry um i no i like with conspiracies it's hard it's hard to believe in in them even though they're a lot of fun because um because like conspiracies usually um require like hundreds of thousands of people to keep a secret and like you know like a town knows the second two people sleep with each other so like no one's keeping these like secrets you know um but the moon landing being faked i like oh no 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 um jfk was definitely killed by the definitely a thousand percent oh dude yeah because i like like because his he 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 of course had his weird mob ties um and then just the way that that whole investigation was run it it was very clear that they didn't want to find out who um who like shot who like actually killed him or like what yeah who's holding puppet strings yeah, exactly. Um, another conspiracy I like, but I think I don't know if this is a conspiracy, but it's kind kind of been proven true, sort of, um, or at least there's strong evidence to s- support it. Was that um, that when the Bloods and Crips um, had their truce back in the early '90s, um, that the the CIA or FBI or whoever, one of the Alphabet Boys, uh, like they they would do things to like shake up that truce so that way they'd start fighting again because if the Bloods and Crips were to unite and just start like like kind of a more political group, then they would actually be able to bring up some, some sort of change. And so so from what I heard was like 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 Bloods would have a party and then like like people dressed up as Crips would shoot it up just to like oh. start Yeah. Just start yeah, it just, up again. Just to start it up again. That's don't quote me on any of this because this is very half remembered. Yeah. But that so, one 
makes a lot of sense because they did very similar stuff with like like the black black panther um, and a lot of like civil rights group and so i think they saw like bloods and crips united as like a budding militant civil rights group um and they're like oh we gotta stop this we gotta we gotta cut that thing down before it gets too crazy yeah it's it's, so that that's one i believe there you go (sighs) i think that's i mean it's a hell of a choice uh so there you have it the fourth episode david confused has come to a halt i want to thank our sponsor again fresno cactus and succulent society uh stopped because covid but once they once the bans are lifted they're going to get popping uh i think the next one's in september at the fairgrounds so drop in get your cactus and succulents Get yeah. your get your suck on. I'd like to thank one more time Anthony Dugan, Tony D for making Thanks for the podcast. Uh Anthony, tell them tell them where they can see you uh other than your Weezer podcast. They can see me at my apartment because I'm still here in here just playing a lot of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. <laughs> uh, okay, once the once the everything lifts though, every Friday at uh, Mystic Music in downtown Fresno. Um, I run an open mic there. It's a lot of fun. Um, we're, we're, we actually were starting to get people, which was nice. Um, see me there. Um, every once in a while, I'll do the Monday Zoom open mic. Um, so check mm-hmm. your local listings for that. I think this this week, though, I'm a little tuckered out. So let's get that. No. Online Zoom shows. He's got the killer show downtown at Mystic Music. I uh, will be posting that as soon as the band gets lifted and we get going again. Yeah. Uh, but episode four, I'd like to thank Tony once again and to ev- all the listeners at home. Until next time, peace. Bye, everybody. There we go, brother. You know what? I didn't feel good about that one. Can we redo that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Whoops. I wasn't recording. Sorry. <laughs>